So I've been fascinated with lucid dreaming uh, most of my life. Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm the most avid dreamer, but I definitely have very vivid dreams when I do dream. Um, lucid dreaming is essentially being conscious in a dream. And so that means you are aware of dreaming. I know a lot of people that have done this and weren't really aware that it's like a thing or that it was novel. Um, but the book that I started reading, it's by Robert Wagner. It's called Lucid Dreaming, Gateway to the Inner Self. And he has a very interesting perspective on the purpose of lucid dreaming and, and using it as a tool to look into yourself. So when I was younger, um, I would become conscious in dreams all the time. And when I did this, uh, there were two things I usually did. Number one was I would try to fly because, I don't know, as a kid, like, what do you do? You want to fly. So mm -hmm. I had this thing, and I'd jump up, I'd say fly power, and I'd fly all around. Wow. Um, and the second thing I would do is I would just try to create stuff. I would try to be like, I want this. Like, if I, you know, I, I loved Star Wars as a kid, so, like, I want a lightsaber. So, I, right, I would, I would try to, like, control the dream, and it sometimes worked, it sometimes didn't. What I essentially just tried to play around with it. And so... Robert Wagner in his book here, he, he says, you know, that's all great, um, but, you know, there might be more to this lucid dreaming thing. Now, a lot of people have different opinions on why we dream. My personal opinion is it's kind of the way that our body, uh, it's, like, it's like a simulation of our mind. And, the, and so while we're sleeping, our, our brains, what they're doing is they're kind of taking all of the stuff that's happened in the day and they're kind of throwing it and mm -hmm. that's how we get long-term memory. It's just doing a little bit of maintenance. And, mm -hmm. When, uh, when we sleep and we're in the, the deepest point of uh, sleep, I think stage five, uh, we're completely, all, all our nervous system is kind of shut down. In other mm -hmm. words, like we're, we're paralyzed essentially, you know, um, we can't move our body. So the only thing our body has to do is keep the heart going, keep the brain going, keep us breathing. So very, very simple. Um, and it's in this time that the brain kind of has the ability to do other things, right? Mm -hmm. And that's essentially where, where dreaming comes from. So... My thought is if, if when we're dreaming, there's a way to get a little deeper into our mind because we're able to, you know, people who meditate, they're able to block out their consciousness, which is always hovering over our subconscious and kind of loosen it. And then we're able to actually communicate with our subconscious. Now, not necessarily directly, but my personal opinion is that while lucid dreaming is, is the only time, and, and this is kind of what Robert Wagner alludes to in his book, it's the only time we can actually communicate with our subconscious, and it's done so through mm. the dream. Mm. Um, so in this book, he says that through lucid dreaming, you can essentially, um, you can deal with trauma that has been repressed in your social, uh, in your life. And you can, you can deal with this by actually confronting it within the dream. So... Um, one of the ways he says to induce lucid dreaming and to have it more often is you come up with what's called like, uh, I forget, I forget the term he uses, but it's like, it's like a dream hook. It's kind of like dream hook. Yeah. I think that's what you mentioned. And um, by the way, what's the name of this book? It's uh lucid dreaming gateway to the inner self. Lucid dreaming. Cause I actually never, so I have a very long list of books that I'm planning to read. I never got around to reading this. Yeah. I did read the other – you recommended a, a couple of ones over the yeah. years. But um, I'm going to read this myself. But but go on. So you have the dream hook. Uh, yeah, and he might use a different word for it. But essentially it's, um, it's a way of reminding yourself or rather checking yourself. So maybe he calls it like a dream check, that, mm -hmm. that you're in a dream. So the example he uses is, your, is his hands. That's what he used. So every time in your waking life you see your hands – you ask yourself, am I dreaming? Mm. And you do this habitually. So you train yourself to... Now, what I started doing is instead of using my hands, I did a light switch. Every time I turned on a light switch, I stopped and I asked myself, am I dreaming? And it gets a little annoying at first because you do it once and then you forget about it. But but if you keep doing this, interesting. Some, it's interesting what happens. Eventually, in a dream, you're going to see your hands or you're going to flip a light switch. And... If you do this often, guess what? You're going to, in your mind, you're going to question, am I dreaming? And all of a sudden, boom, you're completely aware you're dreaming. And it's amazing how the dream changes. It's like once you become lucid, all of a sudden, it like slows down. You know, you know when wow. we wake up and we can't understand our dreams, it's like, it's like a foggy memory. Well, when you do this, all of a sudden, it like becomes, it, it just doubles in reality. All of a sudden, you're aware of like, the air around you, the things around you. Someone, you're hyper stimulated, like you just yes. had like coffee. Yes, and so other drugs. you know, going back to what we're talking about, perception is Robert Wagner. You know, he was able to in a dream 
um, he, there was a fire and what he did was he put his hand over the fire and he didn't feel any pain and he was like well this is interesting so then he said you know what fire hurts so then he put his hand over the fire and expected to feel pain and he did and then wow. he did it again and said this is fake there is no fire and he put his hand there and there was no pain and I'm, so I, i'm just i don't know about you i'm imagining inception right now yeah. imagine well, leo well, in one of those this, one what, of those loops the, the the novelty in this is that if you can feel pain and in a dream you can turn pain on and off based on your perception in other words if you expect to feel pain you'll feel pain however if you do not expect to feel pain, then you won't. That That is very interesting because right in, in this dream, we're essentially, we're showing ourselves that we can control the entire reality of our existence in that dream right. with our simple perception. And it makes me wonder how far does that apply in our waking lives you know how, how wow. far how far does that apply in our waking this lives? this is so. uh th this is this is a mind fuck i'm not yeah. gonna uh, i'm so not, I, I'm so not I, gonna beat around the bush that's I'd highly, wild yeah i'd highly recommend reading the book um there's a lot more information there